But it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at a somewhat future proof PC build for budget minded builders. This is a build which is going to come in around about the £800 mark, but certainly has a lot of upgrade potential, should you wish to, further on down the line, but will give you pretty decent performance straight out of the box on day one. So, we've got a list from PC Part Picker using some of the latest products available on the AM5 platform. Well, at least processor wise anyway, which uh, may be pretty useful for some of you. And also we're going to be using PCI Express Gen 4 components on here with a really nice little budget motherboard. Going to be a really nice little PC if you should decide to go ahead and purchase the parts in the list. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's take a look on the computer and see what we've got. Okay, so we've got our PC part picker list. This is all going to be listed in the video description as well as individual affiliated links for the individual products should you wish to take a look. Now, this is towards the end of January 2025 and as some of you may already be aware there has been a slight change in the government over in the United States which potentially could involve tariffs. Now I don't know how this is going to affect these prices so obviously depending when you're watching this these prices may have changed already. Potentially they may have dropped I honestly don't know but like I said there will be links in the video description so feel free to check them out. So let's start off with our first item. So the first one is going to be the AMD Ryzen 5 8400F. 4.2 gigahertz, six core processor, boosting up to 4.7 gigahertz. This is a kind of a new revision which is out. Now this is one which may be a slight bone of contention with some people. Now the 800 series does have slightly less cash on board, which as we know for gaming purposes, more cash equals better FPS. So this is going to be somewhat interchangeable with the Ryzen 5 7500F, which is the previous incumbent, which is actually about 200 megahertz faster, but often is a little bit hard to get hold of. All of the items that we've got listed in today's video are easily available from retail stores within the UK and also in the US and potentially other areas as well. So we'll try and put some other links in as well. So if you are outside of some of those countries or where you find it a little bit harder to get parts, we will put some AliExpress links in as well, which will give you a little bit more choice and potentially allow you to save a bunch of cash, especially on the processors. I have seen previous videos for the 8400F where you can get it for somewhere in the region of about $80. So that may potentially be an option. And also because it's a little bit cheaper there, you may be able to squeeze in the 7500F which I would say would be the favorable processor out of the two. But again, for ease of use and availability pretty much globally, the 8400F is the kind of the best entry level AM5 processor currently for the gaming market. So at the moment on Amazon here in the UK, this is currently £122.99. I think it's actually a pretty fair price, does a pretty decent job and may well be suitable for you. We'll take a look on the AMD site. You can see some of the specs there. This doesn't have any integrated graphics, so you will need a graphics card to go with this. This is where they get the F on the end, so basically the onboard graphics have been fused to be disabled. This is using the Zen 4 architecture and has six CPU cores, 12 threads, supports multi-threading and is an unlocked processor. So potentially you could even overclock it a little bit around about 200 megahertz very easily on this to get it on par with the 7500F. So that's our processor, obviously you're going to need to keep it cool. Depending where you buy it from, if you buy a retail box, it's going to come with a cooler, so you can possibly forget the next one. If you're buying it as a um, like an OEM type thing from AliExpress, you will need a cooler. And I would probably suggest getting a CPU cooler anyway, just to keep the noise levels down and also give you potentially a little bit more overclocking headroom. Now in this instance, at the moment, Arctic are celebrating, I think it's their 23rd anniversary or 24th anniversary. So they've got some deals on at the moment, which is excellent because it means the Arctic Freezer 36 ARGB is now available again for around about the kind of £20 mark currently on Amazon.co.uk, looking at £22.32. The Freezer 36 is a great cooler. As you see directly from Arctic themselves, it's currently out of stock, but hopefully when you uh, watch this video, you will be able to get your hands on one for a pretty decent price. Comes also in black or white, so if you wanted to uh, go with a white build, potentially that you can do as well. But we've gone with the, uh, the black version here as it's slightly cheaper. Great cooler, easy to install, does a fantastic job, comes with two lovely ARGB fans pre-installed. Very hard to beat this at this price point. 
Going back to our list now, so we need a motherboard obviously to attach this to. So I've gone with something a little bit unusual. So this is the Gigabyte B650 UDAX. Yep, that's right, it's an AX board, so that means it has integrated Bluetooth and Wi-Fi straight away. This at the moment comes in at a really good price here in the UK, $136.99 from Morcoco, and other sites do stock it as well. This, I think, is going to be one of the uh, the go-to boards for budget builds on the new AM5 platform. And taking a closer look at the board itself, you see it's got a, a reasonable I.O. section there. Of course, we've got our built-in Wi-Fi 6, also got some Type-C, you've got some faster ports there, Gigabit LAN, you've got your audio jacks, you do have HDMI and also DisplayPort, but obviously with the 8400F, those will be disabled. But if you're using a different processor, then you can make use of those. You've got six USB 2s, which are going to be great for things like your keyboard, your mouse, headset, microphone, those kind of usual peripherals. A relatively basic board, not a great deal going on. No integrated I.O. shield, so you do have to put one on yourself. But it does come with all those things that we like, such as being a full-size ATX. So graphics cards aren't going to be a problem, crushing up any of your slots. You've also got four RAM slots for future upgrading, a reasonable VRM, which really isn't going to be that necessary for the processor we've chosen. Although this board will be fine with pretty much most AM5 processors, as long as you're not getting too carried away and going for kind of 12 core models. Something else we've got, we've got the Easy PC Latch and also RGB Fusion, so lots of RGB built in on this. And more importantly, if you are going to be using the 8400F, it does have the Gigabyte Q Flash Plus button on the bottom here. So if you do need to flash your boss before you can use your processor, you do have that built in, which could be very useful. Going back to some of our other parts, so we're going to be using some Corsair Vengeance 32 gigabytes. This is DDR5 6000, which is pretty much the sweet spot for AM5. CL36, so it's not the fastest, but certainly is the cheapest. Currently at just a shade under £75 here in the UK from Amazon Prime. Excellent value for money. If you want RGB RAM, you're going to be looking at paying about an extra £20 to £30. So that is a decision you can make for yourselves. But I think the uh, budget-minded will probably go with the slightly cheaper Corsair Vengeance. There are other options as well, such as the Crucial Overclocking RAM, which is a similar sort of price, sometimes a little bit more expensive. Hence why I've chosen the Corsair Vengeance in this instance, as it is a little bit cheaper and very, very widely available. When it comes to storage, gone with a Kingston NV3 1TB. This is an NVMe drive, PCI Express Gen 4x4. Really nice drive, bought a couple of these already. They run very well and currently at the moment in the UK, looking at 45 quid, which is an excellent price. Some NVMe drives are a little bit on the more pricey side at the moment. But if you have the budget and you want to spend a little bit more, you can get better drives. Maybe something like one of the Crucial Plus range or again, whatever you want to. But for a decent all-round drive, the MV3 is really good and is a solid upgrade over the Kingston NV2, which was one of our previous choices. So obviously, if we want to play video games or even do anything, we are going to need a video card. In this instance, we've gone with something slightly left of field. Gone with the ASRock Challenger OC ARC B580 12 gigabyte video card. Now at the moment here in the UK, you can pick these up relatively easily for just a little bit over the MSRP. So currently this is 269.99 available from AWDIT. Potentially you can get other cards of a similar sort of spec, but you are going to be paying a little bit more. So you've got options there. You've got the RTX 4060. Those are often around about the £260 mark, but is only an 8 gig card, which is going to show its age a little bit sooner. Having 12 gigs does give you that little bit of future proofing and also the ability to stack a few more textures in should you need to. Obviously, this is a somewhat budget build. If you want it to be fully future proof, you could obviously spend a considerable amount more on a graphics card, something like the 7800 XT for around about £400 on the market at the moment which is a really good choice again and a very good pairing. But again, this is somewhat of a kind of lower budget build. And with the ASRock Challenger, the B580, although there have been a few kind of minor issues with the performance with CPUs, i.e. if you have a faster CPU, you get better performance. I'm hoping some of that is going to be ironed out in future driver releases. And it's always going to be the way that the B580 it's going to be performing the best it can with your processor. If you upgrade your processor, not only are you going to get more FPS because of the CPU, the GPU is also going to appreciate it more. So that is definitely something to 
be considering if you are looking to upgrade in the future and still remaining on this graphics card. Let me know in the comments section what your thoughts are on the ASRock Challenger and the B580 in general. I think in this particular instance for £270-ish, I think it's a pretty decent choice if you want to go for something like the Radeon RX 6750 XT, you're going to be paying around about £100 more. Are you going to get £100 more value out of it? I personally don't think so, so I think this is a very good shape. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. The card itself, not a bad looking card, quite a slimline one as well. Reasonable fans on there, so it's going to stay nice and cool. And of course, you have got that 12 gigabytes of RAM over at 192 bit bus. You also got the things like super sampling as well, so that might be helpful in some games. If you're potentially doing a little bit of content creation as well, maybe a little bit of Photoshop, these cards can do really well in some of those productivity tasks as well. So again, yeah, potentially this might be something which you want to use. Also, it only needs a single eight pin power connector and doesn't use an absolute ton of power, which is quite nice. So we need a case to put it all in. So at the moment cases, obviously you can choose whatever you want to. We've had some uh, previous choices such as the Montec, the 903 Max Air, which is around about the same sort of price, 60 pounds. But I wanted something a little bit smaller and also something which comes with included ARGB fans. So we've gone with the MSI Magforge 112R ATX mid tower case, currently £60 on Prime. I think it's a pretty decent price and taking a closer look, you can see it's a pretty standard affair, but we've got lots of nice mesh on the front. Comes included with four 120mm ARGB fans. Also comes with a ARGB hub built in as well to make wiring a little bit easier. Also the case comes with some uh, integrated buttons as well. So if you want to change your RGB and you don't want to use the RGB on the motherboard, you can go through and use the Insta Light Loop button. So you can just press that to cycle through your RGB. If you don't want to install RGB software to extract a few more FPS out of your system. But yeah, overall, nice case, gonna fit graphics cards easily. Got all the ports on the front, all the USBs, etc. I think it's just a, a nice overall looking case and doesn't break the budget. And clearly we're gonna need a power supply. So I've gone with MSI again on this one. So the MSI Mag A650BN. So this is a 650 watt bronze. This is going to be absolutely fine for this build and have a little bit left in the tank for reserve should you wish to do some upgrades power supplies are getting a little bit pricey at the moment so this one is just under 60 pounds at the moment from amazon prime again 58.15 which i don't think is uh horrible but uh would like it to be a little bit cheaper again obviously depending on the region and current pricing you may want to swap that out with something else but that at the moment is probably much the best bang for buck here in the uk at the time of making the video now you will need a Windows license key. I haven't included that, but you can pick up a Windows license key from premiumcdkeys.com forward slash Mike's Unboxing. Sorry, shameless plug, but you can pick up a key for around about $3 or three euros, around about £2.50, £2.60. If you want to, links for that will be in the video description as well. So it's not a massive cost. If you are spending more money on your license keys for Windows, please stop doing it. The links are in the video description. So overall, Price-wise, just for the tower unit itself, we're looking at a total price of £790.90, and pence, which I feel is actually pretty decent value, especially being that this is an AM5 platform. Lots of future-proofing potential, so you could take out this processor and put in a 9800X 3D if you can actually find one for sale. So AM5 platform is going to have a lot of longevity. You could, of course, if you want to save even more money, go with the older AM4 platform, maybe a 5700X 3D, which arguably would be a little bit faster, but it is somewhat of a kind of end of life platform. So is it worthwhile buying new if you're going for the AM4 platform? I personally don't think it is at this particular time, especially now with the RAM prices coming down and motherboard prices coming down. If you look at the RAM prices, 32 gigs of RAM, 75 quid, if you went for DDR4, you're still going to be looking around about 60 quid, so it's not much of a step. And again, motherboard-wise, a decent B550 motherboard, around about 100, 120 pounds. You're paying about 15 to 20 pounds more, and you are having a considerably longer lifespan. So there you go, there are some of the parts that I am recommending, and it's also parts I actually buy myself. So the Corsair RAM, yep, I've got a set here. The Kingston MV3, yep, got one of those here. I've actually got the 8600G here, which, yeah, we won't go into that too much. I'm not sure why I bought that, but anyway, kind of this is effectively, give or take, 
very similar to what the 8400F is, minus obviously the onboard GPU. And this was getting on for nearly 200 quid. So yeah, potentially a big saving there. Or like I said in the video earlier, if you're not really keen on the 8400F and you want the extra cash, then the 7500F, if you can pick up one, is the better option. And it's probably not gonna be that much more expensive. And if you go to AliExpress, obviously it's gonna be considerably cheaper there anyway but you do lose some of the options such as your warranty status. And uh, yeah, as with it always, it's a little bit of a, uh, a gamble when you're buying from AliExpress. Whereas if you're buying things from a UK seller or you're going to somewhere like Amazon, any of the big brand stores, then obviously you do get a, a much better warranty experience. And of course, with Amazon, you get the 30 day money back guarantee. So if you buy something, you think that's it, no, I wanna change it, send it back and buy something else, which uh, is something I do very frequently. Anyway, hopefully these uh, particular parts have been of interest to you. If you've enjoyed this video, smash the like button. If you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.